for an artist in his 80s, Stan Bitters doesn't show any signs of slowing down. His art is receiving international acclaim, he has more commissions than he can handle, and he's enjoying a new level of success in his career. Stan invited us to his Fresno studio and home. It's mostly uh, happy to have work. I, I remember the 50 years that I suffered uh, getting loans from my family to keep on going because I felt it was that important in my life. And so it's now uh, obviously paying off in terms of having stuck with the pro program. The way he related to the material, to the clay, and the kind of organic way he was looking at things really intrigued me. And I thought, this is a guy to watch. So you're a big fan of his work at the Fulton Mall. What else would people might know, know Stan's work in this area? Well, he has a lot of work in uh, buildings all around town. I, at one time, I was uh, researching public art, and all I had to do was go up and down streets downtown, out to the airport. I saw Stan's work everywhere. He has so much work, he, he, can't, he can't get to it all. Well, it's a good thing he's got good workers, because he's getting older, like all of us, and we have to designate some some jobs to other people because he's in, now he's become so well known I guess you'd have to say famous that uh, he needs to have help to get all of this work out. So what's your favorite Stan Bitter's work of all time? Does anything come to mind? Well I have a couple of pieces of his that I really love that they're sculptural and they have heads on them so they're like, like people with bodies, big chunky bodies and I also liked when he was making fountains, because I had a fountain before, which is also very much of like chunks of clay that are threaded onto pipe and then the water spills out all over the, the uh, clay boxes and it makes a wonderful sound. I like those things. I like those things that I have, I guess. <laughs> you, you make good choices. <laughs> I think I do. So what do you envision for this space? It's not, it's not gonna be open to the public, correct? But you want there to be a place for people to, to come and gather? It will be a gathering point. Uh, I do have uh, uh, many people that request a visit to the studio. And so this will be on the so-called tour that uh, eventually uh, I will give them uh, the invite to come in and talk about things and uh, attitudes because I think very strongly that the sculpture aspect is still in the planting and the relation to sculpture uh, I think that's the statement so I'll be pushing that as part of the tour so something you told me last time um, I thought was was interesting you kind of joked that um, <laughs> you don't really like people all that much. And it's funny that you're building this or you're making this place um, in which it's designed for people to. Yeah, that, that is kind of interesting when you bring that up. I thought about this and uh, you know, I'm a anti-people person. And, <laughs> and here, uh, what I've done is to buy a house over that 800 foot uh, space I had in the uh, studio and really uh, present it in a way that uh, becomes a uh, people related uh, interest and in doing that I've crossed from being contained with myself to opening up and saying, you know, here I am, uh, you know, here's what can happen with space. I'm uh, trying to integrate uh, sculpture and uh, clay attitudes in the space, and I'd like everyone to be a part of it. And uh, so doing that, I've peopleized the area. So we got windows, which I've never had before working in a metal building. Uh, so this concept of outdoors, I've extended to tearing out walls 
putting more glass in so I can relate from the outdoor to the indoors and open it up and have a fluid situation and that therefore the garden becomes so much more important to the interior actually. And so uh, the two uh, will become more viable as time goes on and I keep integrating uh, architectural items of the ceramic. It's a very inspiring story. I, I really um, admire your, your, I guess your work ethic in a way. Oh, yeah, I really uh, devoted my life uh, to do it. You know, there was not doing, during my youth, there was uh, not doing anything with dating or uh, involvement with people. It was just well, as at work at the hand sump company, I used to take the sleeping bag and sleep all weekend uh, in the dry room and then be able to work uh, uh, during the day. And, you know, just regarding, you know, getting paid for it, it was just uh, something that there was a need to do it. I felt obligated to my interests and, and where I was going in life. And so the attitude is pretty much stuck uh, most of the way. Uh, up to now and uh, I think that's what it took to really do it.